So, therapy. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Do you feel like there's any a, there's a set time to start therapy? Like, let's say, like, do you feel like people should go to therapy when their relationship is tough? Or should people just go to therapy? You know, you, you're in a fresh relationship. Let's, hey, let's go to therapy. Let's work on, you know, what we can work on now before we get more into this. Like, listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. So, there's a guy, well, me and this guy, we were friends, we've been friends for like over 10 years, and so we decided that we wanted to take things a little further, we did, um, and at the time, I was in school and stuff, and um, he lives a completely different lifestyle than me, so. Different good or bad? Bad. So, yeah, um, I just told myself, okay, I'm going to give him some time to kind of get his stuff together, you know? So that's what I did. And so now his time has run out. So now it's like he wants to, everything that he wasn't doing, now that he wants to do it. And I've been here before with that. You know, a lot of times when you want somebody to do something, they don't do it. But then when they see you leaving and going your own way, then that's when they want to pick up the slack. And Are these things that he's doing for you or for himself? More so for me, but it's things that he should be doing for himself, in my opinion. I always tell him, like, I don't want you doing this for me. I want you doing it for you. So now it's just kind of like he's doing things that I've asked him to do. Um... And now I'm stuck because it's like now I, I'm on a whole nother level now. Like I'm trying to move forward and move on. But I feel like I'm stuck because this was the person that I did. If I was going to be with somebody, that's who I wanted to be with. But then you showed me that you couldn't do the things that I asked you to do. Simple. Well, do the things that you should do to be with me, I feel like. So... It's just like now, I don't know. Like, I kind of feel I'll give wrong. You a simple, for... I'll give you a simple answer. Okay. I'll give you a very simple answer. The worst thing you can do is fall in love with who a person is mm -hmm. or who you want a person to be. Right. The only person you should be falling in love with is who that person wants to be. Mm -hmm. Because anything else is unsustainable. Because what tends to happen is, when he does enough to get me back, is he gonna continue to do that to keep me? Right. Especially if that's not really what he wants. Right. So part of the reason why I say a lot of times, a lot of niggas don't deserve pussy. A lot of niggas don't need to be messing with women at all is because you're not moving in the direction of the caliber of man that you want to be. Mm -hmm. You don't respect yourself as a man. How can you expect her to? What is she going to respect? What are you building that she's going to help you with? Right. So again, and men, bless our hearts, you know, we're going to do enough to get you back. But ultimately, if he's not doing that for himself, for himself, and goes back to the integrity, the principle, shit like that, you have two types of niggas. Either his apartment is nice because he likes to live in a nice apartment and he likes to wake up to that type of ambiance, or his apartment is nice because he's trying to get bitches. Right. Same thing. Those apartments might look the same, but like, what's the reason? Yeah. Because at some point, if it's just something shallow as like, I'm trying to get bitches, that's not going to sustain. Right. Because is it, that's not him. It's something he's doing to, you know what I'm saying? It's like a car guy who, like, I know the horsepower, I'm into cars, versus I got this car to get bitches. Right. You see what I'm saying? So ultimately, you have to assess, 
The only thing worth respecting is if he's doing it for him. Exactly. And that's what I've been telling him. I'm like, I don't want you doing anything for me. I want you doing it for you. If you have to tell him, it's too late. Yeah. And that's how I feel. I mean, it's already too late for the man, yeah. but I just, you know, I just, cause like I said, we were, we were friends before anything. Like we were friends for years and, um, we've always crushed on each other, but we always kept it at a friend level. But now it's like, you know, just me being his friend. It's like, okay, I want you to do these things for you. Like, don't include me. Cause he's like, well, why you didn't tell me that you wanted the service? But it's like, I don't want to tell you. Anything. That's not manhood. Yeah. A woman cannot, and it goes back to what I said off camera, a woman cannot raise a man. Yeah. A woman cannot instill the, the discipline, the disposition that's necessary to go out and fight the world. You can't do that. And if, it, if a woman does that, she's not going to do it right. Yeah. That's not y'all's ministry. And it's not saying y'all are bad or y'all are wrong or y'all are insufficient in some way. That's just not your ministry. Going back to, and I'm not the best Christian in the world. Yeah. Biblical text will tell you in Genesis, before God created Eve, he gave Adam purpose. He told Adam to tend to the garden and all the creatures in it. So a man's number one priority should be his purpose before a woman. A woman is there to help you with your purpose. Okay. But a lot of men put women before their purpose. And then they have the woman create a purpose for them. It never works ever because at the end of the day, she won't respect you because you aren't standing on your own two uh, uh, before me. So how are you going to leave me? Right. You didn't even know where to go before I got here. So that's a very simple answer. Once you do that internal work and once you become the woman who's going to attract that caliber of man, you can rest. Femininity is supposed to be easy. <laughs> it's supposed to be you laying back. You just you want a nigga train and he's just taking you. And you can relax and you can like part of the reason. And I talk about this sometimes. Part of the reason a lot of women are having orgasms is because y'all motherfuckers stressed. Oh, my God. Y'all niggas stressed. Yes. You I'm, can't, I'm so glad you said that. You see what I'm saying? You, you can't relax on some shit. You yes. can't be all oh, this thing oh my about me. Yes. And that's that's a real thing. You can't. How how, how do you. How can we. If Let go. Yeah, we can't. We can't. Yeah. It, it starts. It starts with y'all. And what I want to see especially come out of the series is if women, because women are always talking about we're doing the work. A lot of women aren't doing the right work. No, they're not. And I can, I can just speak for myself. Like I can, I do some work, but I know that I, it's, oh, it's so much that I have to do. A lot of the work is just to become more of the type of man you want, as opposed to become more of what he would want. Yeah. And then when that happens, you start attracting different things to you, not just men, but different things to you. You end up in different environments. You're eating different foods. You're talking different, walking different. Yeah. And all of a sudden, different shit just happens. Kevin Samuels. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on him? Let's start with that. Wait, who? Kevin Samuels. Who is that? You don't know who Kevin Samuels is? No, I don't know who that you, is. You're gonna die alone. The the the. So he's a he's a guy on YouTube. Okay. Um, Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels. Damn, you've been living under a rock. I have. Kevin Samuels. Kevin, he's, he's got like 1.5 on YouTube, 1.2 on Instagram. He's a um, he's a uh, image consultant, right? And at first, he was talking about everything black men need to do to step up their game. And then he transitioned. Wait, 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 wait. What does this man look like? I think I might know who you're talking about. Older black man. With the glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he I know was in Future's video. Yeah, yeah. Kevin yeah. Samuels. Oh, okay, I just, look, I, that's why I, I didn't know his name, though. I was like. Kevin Samuels, yeah. So he's talking yeah. about, you know, um, a lot of black women are going to die alone and, and all yeah. that good stuff. So now that you remember who he is, what are your thoughts on him? And I'm going to ask a follow-up question. Um, what are my thoughts on him? I mean, some of the stuff that he says, I can't agree with it. But I just sometimes I feel like you got to be a black woman to understand what we go through and our way of thinking and how we deal with certain things, too. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's okay to have opinions and to say what you say and you know, but you really can't, you, just like being a black man is hard, being a black woman is hard as well. We're raising black men. So, you know, 
I just, I don't really, I never really watched his interviews, though, and really, I just saw him on my TikTok a couple of times. Yeah, gotcha. So I really can't say, like, the little clips I've seen, you know, it, they've been, like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he, it's kind of weird because he's one of the most divisive figures in our community. Black men feel a certain way about him. Black women feel a different way about him. Mm-hmm. Because... He was always, you know, having these conversations, but he became famous. He went viral when a, a woman called and she she owns a dog grooming business. Mm-hmm. And she said, I'm finding that now that I make all this money, she makes six figures. I can't respect men who make less than me. And he asked her to rate herself. And. She rated herself like an eight, nine, something like that. Mm -hmm. He was like, you're average at best. You're not as good looking as you think you are. (laughs) So he pretty much told her she needs to humble herself or she's going to die alone. Yeah. And a lot of women were up in arms about that because they were like, how dare he talk to her like that, this, this, and this. But unfortunately, I think what the men are saying is that we are meeting a lot of women like that who are overestimating themselves. And feel like they deserve something that they don't actually deserve. That they're not actually prepared for. That they actually don't qualify for. Because in her case, she was average looking. Mm -hmm. right? But she won a 1% dude. So why do you think that is? Why do you think a lot of our women have an overinflated sense of self? I mean, every woman wants a superman. Like, that's just what we want. Like, we want that fairy tale. Um... Yeah, I just think it just kind of boils down to that. Like, we want that one percent of man because <sighs> why not? That's the life. And I also feel like too, like, like me growing up, and I can remember being a little girl. Like, men did everything. Men was the leader. Nowadays, it's just like I don't know many men that's really leading. They may think they're a leader. They may think they, you know, doing something, but they're really not. And not to put down any man, because any effort is effort. Like, I applaud a man that's doing effort. Anybody that's doing effort, man, woman, whatever. Um, But I can't speak for every woman, but I can just speak for myself. And... I just want that 1% because I feel like that's what I deserve. Let me ask you this. Are you 1%? Am I 1%? I might not be the 1%, but I'm at least in the 5%. I ain't in the... But you didn't say you want 5%. Huh? You, you didn't say you want a 5%. You said you okay. want 1%. Well, I'm just saying, though, because... Generally speaking, though, every woman wants, like, the breadwinner, the man that got it all, like... Yeah, but he, he, that man doesn't necessarily have to be 1%. Well, yeah, he don't have to be 1%. Yeah, yeah. he could be 50%. And then that, that's my issue. Like, a lot of average people don't think they're average, and they feel like they don't deserve, they deserve better than average. And the problem isn't that. The problem is... Well, wait, what makes a person average, though? Numbers. You talking about financially or like... For men, it's more financial. Mm-hmm. For women, it's more... Um, looks and these aren't rules i made up as a society we grade men based on your ability to protect and provide we grade women based on how good you look yeah you know what i'm saying so and that's that goes back to my last point women who are good at providing and protecting thinks that it bumps their number up but it doesn't what you look like True. because the idea is if a boss ass dude walks into this building of a business that I run, Mm -hmm. he's coming to my office first. Not if your secretary look better. If your secretary look better and she's nicer and kinder and sweeter, he going with her 10 times out of 10. Mm -hmm. And I think women don't understand that. So what it creates is women are building the wrong muscles and expecting men to like those muscles. And it's like, no. Yeah. You don't get brownie points for having a deep voice. 
<laughs> Just like as a dude, I don't get brownie points for having hips. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So do you feel like, because again, this is something that happens throughout our community. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like a lot of black women are going to die alone? Yeah. I do. Say more. I mean, why do I feel like a lot of black women are going to die alone? Well, I have multiple points. First point is, I feel like a lot of black women don't know what they deserve. A lot of black women are lost. I mean, so I said, me, me sitting here talking to you made me feel like, I'm, I'm, I'm still a little lost. I thought I was making some progress, you know, these trying to figure things out. But I just feel like a lot of black women are lost. They, we don't, they don't know what they deserve. They don't, so they settle for something and then what they settle for ruins them. And once, like you said, like the, the brain creates a, a repeated pattern, you know? So, you know, once, Something happens to you, it's hard for you to get out of it, but it's easier for you to repeat it. So I feel like that falls into like, I know some women now that's like in their 40s. Um, once I left my baby daddy, I ain't been with nobody else. And I just be like, what? Like, what? <laughs> like, what? You know, this is like, you can't let that situation or that thing happen, like something happen, and you just, you just done with it, you know? It's, it's progress, like you gotta, you gotta do your work. Everybody gotta do their work. Men, women, you gotta work on. The first step is figuring out what it is that you need to do. And then next step is putting all that into progress. And then being consistent with that progress as well. But, um. Yeah, I just feel like a lot of black women will kind of die alone because I've seen it, you know. People be, somebody break your heart and then you still stuck on that heartbreak 20 years ago and you in your 40s. And now I would just assume in your 40s, all the good men gone. I mean, what's left besides the bottom of the barrel, you know? So then you back in that repeated cycle, like, what you gonna find, you're not gonna find nothing that you really can build with or grow with, so you're gonna end up alone. I mean, and some people got it in their head that they better off alone. And that's also toxic as well, so. Yeah. And I mean, that for me, that's what I'm doing this series because I don't want that, right? Yeah. I have a little girl. Right. Uh, and even if I do all the work I need to do with her, if she's still growing up in this culture of I can do bad all by myself, there's a chance it might affect her as well. Exactly. Like, I find myself telling um, my guy friend that I really like now, I'm like, <sighs> I feel like I'm a hard rock. Like, I feel like I'm in this shield, you know? I want to get out of it. I'm tired. So. Put your armor down. Hmm? Put your armor down. It's, that's that's hard when you used to, you know, like you said, it's a it's repetitive. So I'm telling myself, like, when I find myself doing certain things or saying certain things or thinking a certain way, I have to be like, I have to catch myself and be like, okay, this is why you're here, you know, switch that, change that, or, you know, that type of thing. But, yeah, like, I feel like in order to want something healthy, you got to really want it and you got to really put that into perspective like I can say all day like I'm on the perfect guy I want this I want that but if I'm not doing anything to get that or to put myself in that position till I can get that then I'm never gonna get it so yeah. that's where I'm at now like I'm I feel like 2022 is gonna be my year in a relationship but then I'm like I don't know I'm still a little scared Ask me a question or ask me questions. Ask you a question. Any, anything you think I could give you guidance on to position yourself better? Um, yeah, like, as a woman, like, I just, 
What do you feel like you could give me advice on to... So I am more of a, like, like I said, I feel like I need to chill and calm down and, and like, you know, relax. I don't know how to do that when it comes to relationships. You'll hear like gurus and things, they'll tell you that you write down on the list all the problems that you have. Mm -hmm. Star the ones that you can control mm -hmm. and X out the ones you can't. Right. Because if you keep the ones that you can't control on your list, you'll just end up ruminating, just an endless cycle of rumination about the inevitable. Like you can't change that, so like why worry about it, right? Because I think that is part of the masculine energy, mm -hmm. you know, that, that concern, that worry and everything. And female energy can really only operate and thrive in peace within yeah. tranquility. Because you have to think to yourself, like, why would that type of dude want to be around me? If I, especially if I don't believe him. Yeah. Because I'm more comfortable thinking, oh, he might, that nigga might be gay, or he might be, he might be, uh, he might be playing me, or he might be a, a, the tender yeah. swindler, or whatever the case may be. When the reality is, if he was already those things, <laughs> the damage is done. Yeah, it is. So it why is. worry about it? You're just making it worse, especially if he's not. Yeah. Because what we find a lot of times, a lot of our women, because of trauma, and this is where therapy comes in. You're living life just holding your breath. Mm. Like you feel like if I hold my breath, this punch won't hurt as much. Yes, it will. It's still gonna hurt, right? But if you're flexible, if you're if you're if you have if you have peace within yourself, you know how to replicate that. So instead of worrying about all the bad things that may or may not happen in life, you can then worry about the good things. And strengthen your strengths and diminish your weaknesses, as opposed to just being in this constant state of who's out to get me, who's trying to hurt me, who's going to do this to me, who's going to do that to me. Because guess what? You'll only attract that energy to you. Right. Okay. My next question. Because I feel like I have mastered detachment. So I'm like the type of girl where... Independent. Yeah, we ain't even, you know, as long as I can hear from you at least once a day, but we ain't got to text and talk all day long. And I mean, I'm okay with being able to give my guy space because I feel like we're grown, we're adults. Like everybody's busy life. I don't want to feel like I need to talk to you every second of the day. But to like, like I said, to me, it's kind of like now it's like, it got to the point where it's like, if I don't hear from you, then it's like, I don't care. Like, so I'm trying to get, I still want to have my master, my, I still want to master my detachment, but I also want to figure out how can I get reattached because I want to be reattached to the right person when that time comes. But it's like, if, I, if I'm constantly feeling like, well, he ain't called me all day, so whatever. How am I supposed to? I think the first part is good because I think if it's rooted, if it's based in the fact that you know that he's doing something reasonable. Right. You know what I'm saying? That you respect his time, you respect his integrity, you respect his freedom, right? Because at the end of the day, a man is going to do what he wants to do, right. whether you like it or not, right? Whether he talk, whether he takes from you and doing it or what. You see what I'm saying? He's going to, so yeah. ruminating over it is a waste of time. With that being said, the tough part about it is, the best feeling for a man is feeling necessary. Yeah. It's feeling useful. Like one of the trends I see on TikTok is uh, it'll be like a dude, he'll be like, my girlfriend is mad at me. So he'll go around the house and he'll tighten all the lids. He'll put shit on a higher <laughs> shelf. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Just so she'll have to need him. Yes. Right. So especially in our community, I think what's fucked up is we've told men, black men, that you're not necessary. Yeah. So... It's a, it's a tightrope because don't be clingy right. and over-dependent. Because I have been there. 
That's okay. bad. Okay, that is very bad. Because then that man can't continue being a great man that you fell in love with. He's got his work to do. He's got to go into monk mode from time to time. And you got to respect that. Mm-hmm. You know, you think Savannah James is calling LeBron during the All-Star game? No. She knows he's doing, he's following his pace, tending to his garden, right? Mm-hmm. And that goes back to the type and caliber of man that you're messing with. But at the same time, when LeBron James comes home, Savannah better recognize that this is LeBron James. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I need this man. This is the father to my children. This is the man who's providing this life for me. This is the man who is willing to die behind me. This is the man who whatever I need is taken care of and act accordingly. So it's not an anxious attachment. It's admiration. And what I've been saying to women is, if you don't admire a man, he should not be able to have access to your vagina. Okay. That's that's some words. Like fuck, fuck the vibes, fuck the the, yeah. the butterflies, fuck the all that shit. Do you admire this man? Exactly. Do you know what type of principle that he has? Because ultimately, like you'll hear women, for instance, they talk about, oh, I didn't know, you know, we had a kid and he just dipped and shit like that. And it's like, from where I'm sitting, there's two types of men. It's the man who. Because of just his principle, as a man, the shit he stand on, it doesn't matter if you're Jezebel. He will be there for his child. Right. Are you procreating with that nigga or is it the nigga who always oh, should get hard? I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. And there are ways that you can see that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're relying on he's going to do this, this, and this for me, that's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. But if, he, if you're relying on he's going to do this, this, and this for him and his sanity and his peace of mind, Regardless of what the world is, he, he's standing on something, principle, then you can sleep good at night. And I think a lot of women, they run that type of dude off because they know they're not ready for that. Yeah. They know they don't really deserve that for if they're being completely honest with themselves. And it's not until they do the work and it's not until they improve their resume that they can really sit in that and not question it. Yeah. What else you got for me? Hmm. This is the work, man. We we I got all the time in the world for you. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So therapy. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Do you feel like there's any a, there's a set time to start therapy? Like, let's say, like, do you feel like people should go to therapy when their relationship is tough, or should people just go to therapy? You know, you you in a fresh relationship. Let's hey, let's go to therapy. Let's work on, you know, what we can work on now before we get more into this. Like, how do you feel about that? Like, do you feel like people should go to therapy when shit gets hard, or just let's just Cause like I'm like when I when I get to know a person I want to know like I want to know about your childhood I want to know why you do certain things the way you do or you know and I feel like that's good because if we're planning on being together like childhood trauma is so real relationship trauma any type of trauma is like very real so you know I feel like maybe how, what's your input on it like should people start therapy straight off in a relationship? Or should they wait until they throw in pots and pans at each other? I think the most important part of therapy is the mindset. Yeah. The mindset of saying that I have work to do. Yes. So it's not even about going to therapy per se yet, but it's about saying that I'm not perfect. Right. And I'm not the victim. I'm fucked up too. Mm-hmm. And there are certain patterns that in, in which I think certain patterns of the things I do, certain patterns of the people I surround myself with that are based in childhood. Mm-hmm. And until I'm willing to unpack that, um, I'll keep repeating it. Not I might keep repeating it. I will keep repeating it. Because a lot of times in our community, we think there's just a manna that's going to fall from heaven and shit is just magically going to change. When I turn 25, shit's going to change. When I turn 30, it's just going to change. And it doesn't. 
So what you go to therapy for is for this professional to give you the tools on how to unpack those bags mm -hmm. and lay it out on the floor and figure out, okay, I need to get at the Goodwill. I need to put that in the closet. I need to re repurpose that, refurbish that. I could turn that jacket into a bag. Right. You know what I'm saying? I need to just go ahead and throw that away. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a skill. Mm -hmm. And they went to school for it. And they know how to, especially if it's somebody um, who is keenly in tune with the Black experience. Mm -hmm. And and because a lot of our trauma is generational. It's not even some shit that you went through. It's some shit your grandma's grandma went through. Right. And it was passed through. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And we need to acknowledge that. Yeah. So it's, a, it's about the willingness and then it's about going to get the tools because ultimately you have to be in the business of self-efficacy, self-improvement, self-actualization right. for your entire life because life will continue to throw different curveballs at you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. have you got your fundamentals down good enough to be able to adapt? Exactly. Or is it the next fight, you might fuck around and stab the dude because something triggered from a bag you didn't unpack. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then you're, as, all of a sudden, like you hear people um, who like, you know, they, they, they're in prison for crimes of passion, for instance. You'll be like, I blacked out. Mm -hmm. That's because there was a bag you didn't pack and that shit will come up. It will. It's not if, if it will come up. Right. So it's about a mindset. And then you go seek the professional help and the professional training. Mm -hmm. And then you commit to doing that for the rest of your life and being honest with yourself. That's really all it's about. Being honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm fucked up right now. Okay. I need to do this right now. I need to work on this right now. And a lot of I need to catch either. this when it happens right now. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's the hardest part of all, though. Because people, a lot of people think that they don't need to work on anything. I don't even think a lot of people realize... Like you said, generational curses are real. Mm -hmm. like, a lot of stuff is just continuous, continuous, continuous. Mm -hmm. Like what I've been telling black women recently is this whole niggas ain't shit movement. It's a lot deeper than just your boyfriend who cheated on you. Mm -hmm. It stems back to the 13th Amendment. It stems back to after slaves were released but white people in the South still needed people to work mm -hmm. for free, we realized, okay, we can't make them slaves, but if we imprison them, we can still make them work. Mm -hmm. So they created vagrancy laws. They created Jim Crow, ways that they could recreate slavery in a legal context. Right. And then after that, they put it into the imagination of Americans, including black people, mm -hmm. with things like, there's a movie called Birth of a Nation by D.W. Griffith. Mm -hmm. And it established this idea that black men in particular are criminals. Black men in particular ain't shit. And white people drank the Kool-Aid. We drank the Kool-Aid too. Yeah. And then you have movies like Color Purple that created this idea that Mr. was just bad for the sake of bad. So even if you've never experienced a Mr., even if all you can go off of is part of the story that grandma told you, because nobody asked grandpa his side. And then you see the Tyler Perry movies. All the dark-skinned niggas ain't shit. Mm -hmm. Now, regardless of if anything's ever happened to you, niggas ain't shit. That is my baseline. Mm -hmm. And then I'm surprised when I attract that type of dude and it plays out like that. Right. There's something called confirmation bias. If we already think a certain way, we will manifest that. Okay. And then we'll, we'll, because the brain wants to prove itself right. right. And in our imagination, especially as black people, Right is niggas ain't shit. Yeah, and I still I be saying it all the time. Like you said, the tongue, like manifestations. I I believe the tongue is a powerful thing. So if I'm just, I always I'm trying to watch what I say. But if I'm, you're right. If I'm going around saying this nigga ain't shit, he ain't shit. Guess what? He gonna show me that he ain't shit because I'm already speaking it. Here's what's the most powerful. What do you think that's gonna do to your son? Yeah. The best I could do is ain't, ain't is gonna be ain't shit. So I might as well shit lean right into that. Yeah. And that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like this interview. 
Let's see, do I have any more questions? Oh, okay, I do have one more question. All right, this is kind of personal. So, 